Moments away from Uber's IPO pricing, sources telling CNBC the company is likely to price around $44 to $45 a share. Joining us to discuss, David Trainer, CEO of New Constructs, Jeff Ransdell, VC at Rocker Fuel, and Ed Lee, CNBC contributor from The New York Times. Ed, what are you going to be watching? <laughs> Well, I, I'm curious. I mean, now they're pricing likely at the lower end of the range. You're wondering if they're managing for the pop. Uh, I mean, a lot of the early investors, they're going to be locked in for months and months, right? So I think there's the, the concerns that they're through what you might have seen with Lyft with the short hedge. I mean, they're still kind of there, but um, I, I think that's less of an issue. If you're betting on one of these companies, you got to bet on one. You can't buy into both. That's, that's part of it. But I still think the fundamentals matter in this case. And, and as much as we want to buy into the growth narrative, uh, I still don't know if it's a real business. I don't know if on a per ride basis they can make themselves profitable um, going forward, right? And whether it can only be profitable in certain instances, but not in every other instance. To that point, uh, David, you, you feel like ride sharing as a service is, is hugely beneficial for the consumers, but, but not for the operators, not for the companies that provide the service. Exactly. Long term, this is just going to be like your city bus service. There's really no profit or margin in it. I mean, if they're losing $3 billion now with all the incentives and by squeezing drivers to the point that drivers are protesting and, and it's like not willing to work anymore, you know, how, how's it going to work when they actually have to pay, pay drivers a fair wage? And this automatic driving or autonomous vehicle stuff is, is not going to be a solution either. There's a lot of capital costs and insurance costs associated with that. I think at the end of the day, this, this, I would agree with Ed, this business model does not work. There are no profits in it. Well, uh, we've got another side here, Jeff. You're an early investor. When, when did you get in? And talk us through the, the growth and profitability story, if you can. Got in about four years ago. Um, I'm going to take the other side of this trade. Um, I, I actually think that Uber is in a, in a really good position. Um, you. you you, you look at their diversified, you know, global footprint. I mean, this is a company that is is all over the world. Um, they have an incredible balance sheet. Uh, they're diversified not only amongst ride sharing, but they also have Uber Eats, which I think is a huge opportunity of growth for us. I mean, it's a $795 billion addressable market. If they can just get 1%, you're talking about bolting on another $8 billion on a forward revenue of 14.2 that we're expecting right now. So, you know, to me, that kind of a balance sheet, Uber is doing exactly what they should be doing. They're keeping prices down low right now, so the competitors that they're, they are competing with are going to struggle. They're dry up. Uh, Uber will come in, pick up their market share, acquire the companies that, that, that are important to acquire, and then set the market. And I think everything changes in. This is an exponential company. This is a company that is that is leveraging other assets. Uh, mm -hmm. It's doing everything that they, they, they can do in the right way. And I think, I think it's absolutely a miss if we, you know, they created a legendary company, and I think it's a huge miss if we don't think they're going to do legendary things in the future with it. Ed, uh, to, that, to one of those points made, made, made there, if uh, we did see a merger between Uber and Lyft down the line. That actually that... would be, that would be a, a different story for sure. I think that would benefit the combined company immensely. Uh, I think it might, that might hurt consumers ultimately, right? Because right now, yeah, we're enjoying these, these sort of lower prices because of this competition. You know, from, a, from, a, from an experience standpoint to a consumer, they're, they're both very much the same. I mean, a lot of the drivers drive for both. So what's the difference? Often it just comes down to price. If they combine, they, could, they can control that better, for sure. And the, proximity. Uber and has more cars. Yeah. And the, and Uber has more cars, minutes. exactly. I mean, the, the product that tends to perform best for both Uber and Lyft are the pooled rides, right? Because both the company makes more money and the drivers make more money on those things. And it's cheaper for the consumers. It's just a mindset that the consumers aren't always adopting that. You know, I think the younger consumers are certainly because it's cheaper uh, and just sort of culturally, I think it's more of a fit for that age group. But for the, the wider sort of marketplace, it's not there yet. I think that's the real question mark Mike, for the current business. Lyft's uh, sort of failure after IPOs clearly brought down the overall valuation. Seems People so. are talking about 120 billion. We're looking at about 75 at the moment sure. uh, based on, on what CNBC's reported. Uh, do you think that's lowered it enough that it can have a good start? Yeah, once a list? my sense is that they're trying to be pretty careful about it to not get too aggressive on the IPO. I mean, look, it's very rare to have a company that said a year and a half ago, we're going to do an IPO in a year and a half, right? They're not just sort of hitting the bit of the market. They're saying, we believe it's time to be a public company. They already have a lot of similar type investors in privately that they will have 
publicly. So I think they're trying to place it in strong hands as every IPO does. Uh, I think it's going to be a very good test for the market's appetite for very long time horizon disruptive technology. Are you willing to accept Silicon Valley financial math for a certain amount of time because the long term opportunity is so large? We'll leave it there. David Trainer, Jeff Renzel, thank you. And Ed Lee, our thanks sure. to you as well. Still thank ahead, you. the earnings.